Hi, I'm B for Nixon Mechanics, and in today's video, we're going to be making an articulated 3D printed Doom Guy! So for long-time viewers of the channel, this is not the first time you've seen me 3D print a Doom Guy. I actually made one for my dad about a year ago now. This is back when I was still using Makerspace printers, so if a part failed, well, I just got to cover it in super glue and hope for the best. I also hadn't really spent that much time in Blender, so my modeling skills were not the best. After learning parametric software to make Soundwave and spending a lot more time in Blender with all the animation projects I've been doing, I wanted to see how much has my skills actually improved. So it's time for a remake. To begin with, I want to make a skeleton that I know works. There's no point putting all that effort into making a detailed model just for it to fall over all the time or not hold together. To do this, I'm using a parametric based modeling software called FreeCAD. This software is a lot better at getting precise measurements, and the parametric part means it remembers previous actions. So if I make a part too small, I can just update its size in the list on the left, and it'll all domino down the chain. Now ideally, I want this figure to be around Marvel Legends size, and I also want it to be quite poseable. The only problem with poseable is that means more parts, and more parts means more room for errors to occur. So every time I thought I got a piece about right, like the head or arm, I'd do a test print before moving on to the next piece. I know it looks like I'm wasting a lot of time and material on Mr. Blocky here, but trust me, if I've got a skeleton that works right off the print bed, I can reuse this for any action figures I want to make down the line and it's going to save me a lot more time. So after doing so many test prints and finally getting a block model that worked how I want, it's finally time to do him up. So, I can import my FreeCAD files as STLs into Blender, and make sure my scene's unit scale is set to millimeters, so it's the accurate size. Starting with the helmet, I really liked the A-shape of the Eternal skin. It gives him a more menacing vibe. Now you'll notice as I'm modeling, I'm test fitting it on the skeleton, but I'm not trying to get it to go over like a skin. All I actually need from the block man is the pinholes and sockets. The blocky parts were just for the tests. When I'm happy with a piece like Doomguy's helmet, I can copy paste the ball joint socket of my skeleton and join it with the helmet mesh. Now I have a socket that I know is good tolerances on a detailed helmet, and I can print this model with full confidence it'll work. I'm not going to combine it with the skeleton until I finish the full sculpt though, so next up is the chest armor. I want this to look bulky like armor, but I'm making sure there's still space for the joints to move. No matter what I do, the sculpt will limit articulation, but if I make things like the shoulder pads separate pieces, I can still keep a decent amount of it. For things like his midsection, which is meant to be fabric, I'm trying out Blender sculpting tools for the first time. These tools are great for getting more organic shapes a lot quicker, and while they're not the most intuitive for a robot-focused brain like mine, I still think I was able to get some pretty decent results. Lots of reference of bodybuilders and athletes really helped. Now for the belt. Now I realized on my first version, he's got a lot more pouches than he needs, which also limits articulation, so I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice. Also, in an attempt to make my painting life easier later on, I make it a separate piece to the midsection, so I don't need to mask it off. Bouncing back up the body to the arms, these were quite a challenge. The 90s Doom Guy has those exposed arms, which means I have to sculpt them. And again, I focus on armor or robots, so I had to spend quite some time checking over my model with various reference images, and while it's not perfect, I think it came up pretty decent for something so outside my comfort zone. For the hands, I actually used images of my own hands, and I could trace it almost, making a sort of default template like the skeleton. Again, I'm doing this to help save myself time in the long run. If I want to make more humanoid characters, it's great to have just a default hand model that I can just go and use. Now I can work my way down the crotch and legs, and seeing as he's wearing jeans, I can worry less about getting every proper muscle sculpted, and just make sure the overall silhouette is correct. Finally, I gave him his knee pads, and those big sort of boot trouser armor things he's got on his lower legs. Unlike my first version of Doom Guy, this one's actually got shoelaces on his boots. <laughs> now that the sculpt is done, it's time to rip and tear him into chunks and combine him with the skeleton. This is now the tedious process of copy-pasting the pinholes and mushroom pegs and doing boolean cuts where I need so I can have exact cutouts of the joints. This means they'll all mesh together like the block model did, but have the sculpting I've just done. For things like the armor, it's pretty easy, as the gaps in the armor are where the gaps of the joints can go. But for things that are organic, like his exposed arms, 
I had to make sure the middle joint was also kind of a filler piece, otherwise he's going to have horrible gaps when he bends his arms. So slowly but surely, I once again make my way down the model. The last step is to go in and sculpt some battle damage. Now, I know the paint will do a lot of this later on, but I figured since I'm getting so much practice with the sculpting tool, I might as well see if I can add any armor dents or skin scratches, just so he looks a bit less pristine. All that's left now is to print it, so I chuck the files into Prusa Slicer, chuck those files onto my Prusa Mark IV, and that's not... No, that's not what I wanted. You know how I got all excited about the sculpting tool? Yeah, it turns out that it made the geometry quite detailed, right? Because it's got all those organic shapes, which confused the 3D printing slicing software. What this meant is that when it was generating things like supports, they weren't actually attached to the model at all. So it would just fall over and become a spaghetti mess. This meant that every single piece kind of got re-sliced three times, as I needed to find the right orientation for that piece to print successfully. I didn't realize this was what the problem was at first though, so in some of these time lapses you might see me popping in occasionally as I'm trying to figure out if it's because the bed isn't level, if there's Z wobble, the extruder's not working properly, temperature shifts, a million other ways a print could go wrong, only to discover that the problem's me, my files. I'm the problem. Now that all the parts are successfully printed, it's time to begin sanding. Now I'm using wood filler for all of those little gaps, and then I'm using 120 grit sandpaper to just knock off all the high spots. I always recommend to print in black filament if you have the choice, because if you're going to sand and paint the printed project, the black filament kind of goes grey where you sand it, and it makes it a lot easier to tell where you've already worked as opposed to, say, white filament. After sanding for nearly a week straight, I had all the parts fitting and looking nice. So now I can start priming my pieces black again. The helmet, however, gets a coat of metallic silver, and once that's all dried, I can hot glue them to matchsticks so I wouldn't finger them all the time. Now for what's always my favourite part of the project, the painting. Another first for me this time was using an airbrush. I'm using a beginner-friendly snap and spray airbrush, which means it's not quite as strong as the ones with a full compressor, but it definitely showed me why people talk so highly of these. Because it blows the paint on rather than brushing it, it also helps fill in layer lines, which makes this like the smoothest print I've ever done. It kind of blew me away. I did make the mistake of thinking I could do the base coats with the pre-mixed colours and then dry brush the proper tones on later. That ridiculously smooth finish came back to bite me as none of the paint wanted to stick to it. Then I accidentally tore into the acrylic, making it peel. It was a whole mess, so I had to strip it all off and respray it with custom acrylic mixes. My ratios of the pigment to water are not the best, I'm still getting the hang of this thing, so there was a decent amount of clogging and tinkering to get it to work. But eventually, I did get there. Now that all the base coats are sorted, I could go in with my brushes and give them those little extra details. Most of this was just little bits of silver weathering on the armour, but I also dry brushed lighter browns on the boots. I also used sponges on the flesh tones to give it a different texture to the armor, and finally I gave that helmet the visor it was so desperately needed this entire time. Now that I'm happy with the paint, I can give him a clay coat for that classic action figure glossy look, and begin the final assembly. While I've been working on the Doom guy, I've been looking back at the previous version I did. I'm still really quite proud of that old version, but the fact that I can look at the new one and say in full confidence that I've improved it really brings me joy. So with all that out of the way, I think it's time to frag some demons.
I am so proud of how smooth and glossy I've managed to get this print to turn out. It's easily the smoothest print I've ever done on this channel. Also, stuff like the airbrushing and the sculpting tools and blender working first try, that kind of blew me away. I was terrified to even give it a go, but it was definitely worth it. Also, that skeleton design I can now reuse for a ton of different action figures down the line. I've already reused it on Iron Man, actually. If you've got any character suggestions you want to see me do, feel free to put it down in the comments below. Otherwise, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Farewell!